This video is sponsored by Software Keep. Get your Microsoft products at a discounted price. Apple's 15 inch MacBook Air is finally here and it just got a bit more confusing to choose which MacBook to buy, especially deciding if it's worth going up to the high end MacBook Pros for a higher price or simply choosing the 13 inch Air, which has a brand new lower price. Well, in this MacBook buyer's guide, I'm gonna walk you through the value proposition of each MacBook in Apple's lineup and who each one is meant for. But first, I want to go through the key differences between the current 13-inch M2 Air and the new 15-inch model. The main difference is of course the 15.3-inch display, giving it about 30% more screen real estate than the 13-inch model, which is honestly enough to make this thing a whole lot more useful for multitasking and having multiple web pages open at once. Now the surprising thing is that the battery life is quoted at the same 18 hours, even though the battery itself is 26% larger, 66.5 watt hours instead of 52.6. And that's because it has to run exactly 26% more total pixels in terms of resolution, so the math checks out. Now instead of having a four speaker system like on the 13 inch model, the 15 inch Air gets a six speaker system just like the higher end MacBook Pros, which I think will make a huge difference in the speaker quality. So you're basically getting all of that for just $200 more than the 13 inch model, right? Well, actually no, you're getting even more. Some people might not have noticed this, but the 15 inch model actually comes with the unbinned 10 core GPU at the same 1299 base price. Now, if you were to upgrade that GPU, the 13 inch model actually comes with a binned eight core. So if you upgrade it to the 10 core, there would only be a $100 difference, which I'd say is 100% worth spending for the larger display and better speakers. But going even further, the 15 inch Air comes with Apple's new 35 watt dual port charger in the box, which is actually a $20 upgrade on the 13 inch model. And let me tell you, that difference is definitely worth it since you get an additional port to charge your iPhone or iPad or anything else. So in reality, when you match them spec for spec, the 15 inch model is really only $80 more. And I honestly can't believe that Apple packed that much value in for that $1,300 price. And I think it's gonna sell like crazy and everyone looking should just go for the 15 inch model if you care about getting the best value. However, there are actually three reasons why some people should simply go for the 13 inch model instead. But before I get into that, if you're a Mac or a Windows user who does any sort of work with documents, spreadsheets, or slideshows, our sponsor Software Keep is giving our viewers 25% off on genuine Microsoft software, like a one-time purchase of Microsoft Office for Mac or Windows, which includes Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Now there are so many fishy websites out there that could scam you, but Software Keep is a Microsoft certified partner who sells only 100% genuine Microsoft software, so you don't have to worry, which resulted in Software Keep earning over 100,000 five-star reviews. They also have great prices on other software, including the most popular antivirus software out there, and their customer service is phenomenal with 24-7, 365 customer support, where you'll talk to a real person instead of a robot. So if you have any questions, they'll be glad to help. So buy Microsoft Office for Mac, Windows, or anything else you need today and save 25% off their already great prices by using the link in the description and the coupon code MTYT25. Now getting back to why some people should choose the 13 inch instead. First of all, the entry price is $200 cheaper than the 15 inch, which is definitely a good savings. For reason number two, if you don't care about graphics performance for things like gaming and productivity work, then the eight core core GPU model will be just fine, as you can see in this performance chart. It's still more than fast enough for most people. Now for reason number three, the 13 inch is definitely more portable since the 15 has a 24% larger footprint and it weighs 22% more, 3.3 pounds instead of 2.7. So if you do a lot of traveling or you're a student, the difference might be enough for you to choose the 13 inch over the larger 15. So to be honest, the only reason I would recommend getting the 13 inch Air instead of the 15 is if you care more about portability than value. 
For everybody else, seriously just buy the new 15 inch MacBook Air. Now Apple is also selling the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the old design, and in my opinion, absolutely zero people on earth should buy this thing. It's the same price as the new 15 inch Air, but is worse in so many different ways. Just don't buy it. Yes, it has a fan to cool the M2 chip, but honestly, the fanless M2 Air handles heat just fine unless you're really pushing both the CPU and GPU at the same time. And now the 15 inch Air has a larger chassis, which will help dissipate heat better. So please do not buy the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, before I get into the dilemma of buying the 15 inch Air or the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models, I've got to mention the classic and legendary M1 MacBook Air. Yes, it's got the old design and the big bezels and it lacks MagSafe and many other features, but you can literally buy one for only $800 brand new on Amazon right now, making it a killer deal for someone on a more limited budget. So I still recommend the M1 Air at that price for those looking to save the most amount of money possible. But if you have extra cash laying around, seriously, just go for the new 15 inch Air. And now we have to introduce the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models, which are definitely a tougher sell for Apple now that you can get such a large 15 inch display on a MacBook Air. Honestly, I believe that most consumers will be just fine with the new 15 inch Air in terms of everything from display immersivity, performance, reliability, quality, and convenience. But there are definitely a few reasons to grab one of the higher end pros instead. So let's start off with the 14 inch model. The biggest reason is the value proposition, because even though it seems like the 14 inch is $700 more expensive than the 15 inch Air, that's not counting the fact that the Pro already comes with an upgraded 512 gig SSD and 16 gigs of RAM, both of which are faster than what you get with the M2 Air. So that brings the difference in price down to just $300. However, we've seen the 14 inch M2 Pro model on sale on Amazon as low as $1,800, bringing the difference to just a hundred bucks if you do in fact want an upgraded SSD and RAM on the 15 inch Air. Now, yes, the 14 inch display is a bit smaller than the 15, but it comes with a huge amount of advantages, including my all time favorite, which is 120 Hertz ProMotion display tech, which makes the screen look twice as smooth, matching the experience of ProMotion on new Pro model iPhones, which I really value. There's also the XDR display, which can go up to 1600 nits of brightness for HDR content on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which the 15 inch of course can't get since it's hard limited to 500 nits. The 14 inch MacBook Pro also gets additional ports including HDMI, SD card slot, and an extra Thunderbolt port, as well as likely better speakers, microphones, Wi-Fi 6E support, and it comes with a faster 67 watt charger in the box. But the biggest reason to go for the higher end MacBook Pros is of course the M2 Pro and Max chips, which offer a huge boost in performance. Even the base model binned 10 core CPU on the Pro is 35% faster than the M2 chip, and you of course have the option to upgrade to the 12 core, which gets even faster. And in terms of graphics performance, the M2 Pro chip is over two times faster, so if you really care about getting the most performance you can get, the extra cash is definitely worth it, and it gets even better with the M2 Max chip upgrades that take the performance sky high, as well as the larger 16 inch model if you want to really go all out. So I would say that the only reason anyone should really go for the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro models is if you already plan on upgrading to a 512 gig SSD and 16 gigs of RAM, which the pros get automatically, and you would also like to take advantage of those extra ports and extra performance. Other than that, I'd say that the 15 inch MacBook Air will cover the performance needs of most people out there. The only thing you should be aware of is that we're still expecting the 15 inch Air to have the same single NAND SSD issue as the 13 inch model had, which could lead to drastically slower performance during heavy multitasking and productivity workloads. 
So there you guys go. That was our buyer's guide for all of the new MacBooks in 2023, including the new 15 inch model. So if you enjoyed it, click that circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one and definitely check out our take on Apple's new Vision Pro. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.